I think I love uh, children's sermons as much for the truth that comes out of kids' mouths sometimes. It just surprises us, you know, as anything else. I, I just love that. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, back to children's sermons for a minute. A pastor was, you know, with the children down uh, on, the, on the ground there at the children's sermon one Sunday, and he pulled out this little plastic tab that's in our, our uh, clergy shirts. They're so comfortable. A nice piece of hard plastic jabbing up into your Adam's apple, you know. And he kind of held it up, and he said, do you know, anyone know what this collar does? He said, this is called a collar. Does anyone know what this collar does? And not missing a beat. One little three-year-old said, it'll keep fleas and ticks away for up to six months. <laughs> I feel so good about that. I don't have to worry about a thing. I just got this one, so I'm good until about what, October? <laughs> Perfect. Uh, does anybody remember how many points a good Lutheran sermon should have? Three, Pastor Wormager says three. Anybody else want to take a guess? You, you, you think it's three, but the real answer is at least one. <laughs> I always pray for at least one point for the sermon for Sunday, and that's where we're going to go today. There is one. Uh, Lent began a week and a half ago on Ash Wednesday, and we that night admitted the power that death has over us, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And we also admitted that our human nature is sinful, and it is hurtful, and it yearns for wholeness so much deep, deep down. It's part of our need, and that only God can rescue us from that need. We can't do it ourselves. And that even more, when the gospel comes to us, it's always got the last word. Dust isn't the last word. Hope is that God provides through Jesus his redeeming grace for us. He gets the last word for eternity. That was Ash Wednesday. Then last Sunday, in spite of our sinfulness and our brokenness, the message was that we focus with our very deepest temptations so often. We focus on ourselves for the living of our lives, even in spite of the grace that Jesus says frees us from that. That day after day, our greatest temptation is that we focus our lives on ourselves and in many ways on ourselves only, continually living for ourselves, mindlessly grabbing everything we want, thinking that that's what life is about which ignores our profound need for open arms that reach up to Jesus and for turning outward and living in community with everybody else for a much bigger purpose than just our little selves, for a much more love-filled, generous life for the world in which we live. That was last Sunday. Today, I want to illumine just one point in one little insignificant seeming phrase in the gospel. Here it is. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He came to Jesus by night. In Lent, God keeps beckoning us, even as we are sinners and turn away from him. God keeps beckoning us into the safe haven of his presence. He knows we need this invitation day after day after day in order to rediscover God, turn away from ourselves, and rediscover faith, and make safe confession of our sin and our fears, and find hope in a much bigger truth about life when we're in the presence of our Savior. Listen to Jesus about safe haven. Have no fear, little flock. For it is the Father's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. How many times have I told you that I go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you will be also. And how often have I longed to gather you as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wing. Today, Second Sunday in Lent, is about the leap of faith. About significant growth in us for trusting that God is very real. That his promises are not only better than anything we can get for ourselves, but are also something we achingly yearn for in the depths of our souls and we need. And that loving Jesus here in this community, in his life and on his way to the cross for us, is what opens ourselves to a whole new life, God's life for us. A blessed, often indescribable life of humbling, soul-filling hope and mercy toward us. And daily renewal from the heart of God. Do you believe that that heart is for you? That God is for you? Nicodemus was a Pharisee, so that made him an opponent to Jesus, really. It was a, he was an opponent to Jesus' way forward, his plan for Israel, for the faith of Israel. But Nicodemus could just as easily have been you or me. In fact, I think he is. I think he is. Jesus challenges our lives and our perspectives and our self-centeredness and our stubbornness in ways all the time. But... He is also present in them. And he beckons us to enter safely into conversation with him, conversation with God, our Savior. I think Nicodemus felt safe to go to Jesus. Sure, he went at night because as a leading Pharisee, he could not be seen exploring faith questions with the one who didn't fit any image of the Messiah that Israel hoped for. But there are also other meanings to Nicodemus or you or me meeting Jesus at night, at night. When do you do your best thinking or questioning or praying or arguing with God or mulling over deep things? Hmm? Certainly isn't when we are multitasking during the day, or being slaves to our cell phones, or concentrating on work, or running to kids' activities, wonderful as many of those things might be, maybe not so wonderful as some of them are, no, it's lying in bed at night. It's in the quiet, in the darkness, in the stillness. Maybe in those times, maybe you remember it, Maybe you need to be reminded of it again right now. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. Be still, he says, and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us, the psalmist says. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Too many times, too many times, we think of darkness or nighttime in the Bible, and I think even in our lives, as a metaphor for sin or evil. In places, it certainly is that. There's no question about it. But in many places, maybe even many more in the Bible, for Nicodemus, taking the risk of stepping away from what was safe, but also constricting and risking new explorations of faith with Jesus at night. Or for Jacob, lying down and dreaming of God coming to him in a time of great fear and promising to be with him. Or for the disciples out in the boat on stormy seas, finally giving their trust over to Jesus. Those are just a few. Darkness and night is for opening up to God. 
for God embracing us with loving arms and a safe presence and calming us and accepting us. And nighttime is for risking new thoughts with him about life's brokenness and asking God to heal us and be our God or for letting go of our pain or fear and for hearing again the still small voice of calm. I have not come into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. I so love the world, you this much. Be still and know that I am God. When you're letting yourself enter more deeply your own faith life every day, being more aware of your identity as a child of God, as a disciple of Christ, as a human being in utter need of a Savior, for without Him there's no life, after this life, nor really even any real life in this life, I want you to see Nicodemus. See Nicodemus. He somehow felt safe coming to Jesus, asking his deepest questions, even being challenged by Jesus to go deeper, and being not only welcomed by Jesus, but allowed to go away mulling things over. Jesus was gracious. And Nicodemus didn't walk away from Jesus. He came back in the gospel two more times, once quietly defending Jesus later when the Pharisees were putting him to the test. And perhaps Nicodemus' faith in Jesus was evolving still. And then again, he came back at Jesus' crucifixion to help Joseph anoint Jesus and bury him lovingly. To come to him with love, with deep sorrow, I'm sure. But also with faith, with hope born out of conversations in the night with Jesus. With God's ultimate promise of unconditional love and salvation for the world, including him, including you. Stirring in his heart, breaking through. Jesus is with you, a very present help in time of trouble or questioning or confusion or searching or yearning or growing. Cause yourself to be still, to stop avoiding your deepest thoughts and fears and questions and even hopes and open yourself to Jesus and know that he is God He will shelter you. And with the most gentle love and grace, will look in your eyes and listen to you and hold you and renew you and rejoice over you as a child of Him, your Savior. Amen. Amen.